things he's practiced. It's too complicated. It's too soon. And it's impossible. No, it's true. He's done it. Okay, if he's right, this is going to shake the world to its core. I don't even think they're going to believe it. They've been convinced of what they believe for so long. For centuries. Their survival depends upon it. This will change everything. Evolution premise number one, the missing link. In the last hundred years, there have been numerous discoveries of what evolutionists claim to be the missing link. But fact, time and again, those claims have proven to be false. Nebraska man, Lucy, Java man, Piltdown man. Evolutionists now say that none of these are in fact a missing link. Even Charles Darwin, the father of the theory of evolution, said the fossil record should be full of many different creatures that would show transition, not just for man, but for hundreds of other species as well. But note his observation. The number of intermediate varieties which have formerly existed must be truly enormous. Why then is not every geological formation and every stratum full of such intermediate links? Geology assuredly does not reveal any such finely graduated organic chain. And this, perhaps, is the most obvious and serious objection which can be urged against the theory. Evolution premise number two, spontaneous generation, which is defined as life coming from non-life all by itself. Fact, from the mouth of a Nobel Prize winning evolutionist, there are only two possibilities as to how life arose. One is spontaneous generation arising to evolution. The other is a supernatural creative act of God. There is no third possibility. Spontaneous generation, that life arose from non-living matter, was scientifically disproved 120 years ago by Louis Pasteur and others. That leaves us with the only possible conclusion that life arose as a supernatural creative act of God. I will not accept that philosophically because I do not want to believe in God. Therefore, I choose to believe that which I know is scientifically impossible. Evolution premise number three, mutation. Evolution says that mutations can play an important role in the development and advancement of any surviving species. But, fact, there has never been a documented case of a beneficial mutation that hasn't involved loss of genetic material or that has created a new species. Things don't mutate into new things. A mutation doesn't produce major new raw material. You don't make a new species by mutating the species. That's a common idea people have, that evolution is due to random mutations. A mutation is not the cause of evolutionary change. Evolution Revelation. The title of the book that details Darwin's evolution concepts is often referred to as the origin of species. But the full and not so often referred to complete title of Darwin's book is The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or The Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. What does Darwin mean by favored races? Here are his own words. The more civilized so-called Caucasian races have beaten the Turkish hollow in the struggle for existence. Looking to the world at no very distant date, what an endless number of the lower races will have been eliminated by the higher civilized races throughout the world. Charles Darwin, Life and Letters, page 318. This is your brain. These are your ears. This is the evidence. Will you hear? Random chance or design? Which is more believable? The next time you try to crack the code, ask who designed it.